Hey folks, my name is Gary Karp, and I learned about this hashtag from Robert Jones. I was speaking with Robert a couple of nights ago. I've known him for about 10 years. And as often happened when Robert and I speak, the conversation got around to creators and marketing and the community and how we could build a supportive community that wants to build each other up and help each other and collaborate with each other instead of tearing each other down and all the drama that seems to be running around. And he mentioned that he created this hashtag creators matter hashtag on YouTube and he asked me to take a look at it and see what I thought and see if it would spur any thoughts in my head. So I just sat down and I watched Robert's video and I've watched a couple of the other videos that you guys have put on there with the hashtag creators, creators matter. And I got to say, I was impressed. I like what I'm hearing. I like the passion that's coming out, and I love the different projects that you guys are working on. So I want to be part of this community, and I want to support you guys on your journey. So first, some things about me, and then we'll get into the questions. I am an author, an actor, and a sometimes producer. I've been writing since I can remember, I guess since nine or 10, I've always had a pencil in my hand. I've always been writing, whether it was really bad poetry that didn't get better over the years, unfortunately, to creative writing, to short stories, and to novels, plays, screenplays, whatever it is. I've always been writing ever since I can remember. The acting bug hit me in my junior year of high school. It was the first time I'd ever stepped on stage it was for the high school drama, and even though the play dealt with some pretty heavy subject matter, um, it was for a play called uh, I'll Never See Another Butterfly by, well, I don't remember the author, but it was based on the life of Raya Englanderova, who was a little girl who grew up and spent her entire life in the concentration camps at Terezin during World War II. And when the camps were liberated, they found her drawings and her diaries and they turned it into, and then someone turned it into a play. And yes, that's what my high school did for a drama. <laughs> Not exactly light fair. Anyway, uh, that was the first time I had stepped on stage. And even though it was heavy subject matter, the minute my feet hit the floorboards, I knew I was home. I knew that the stage was where I belonged. And so I spent a good chunk of my life after that. I'd say between the ages of 18 to 30, maybe 35, trying to be an actor and doing everything from off-Broadway to black box theater to community theater to murder mystery dinner theater, which was a shitload of fun. Um, never did the summer stock thing, but I have acted in many states and on many stages, especially in the New York metropolitan area, which is where I'm from. And um, I don't really act that much anymore. I still love it. But as I got older, other priorities took over. Uh, I also consider myself a sometimes producer because I sometimes produce, right? And this was something that I just fell into. I've always hung around and been blessed to have very, very creative friends and a creative support system. And we've always put on our own cabarets, our own plays, and more recently, um, our own web series, right? That was about the the latest thing I did, which was going to be a original science fiction web series that is still in post. Well, I mean, the filming got done last year or about a year and a half ago. The thing is still in post as we run into an issue of trying to find the money to finish the project, right? And that's, I think, something all creators can um, understand and relate to is that balance of, okay, I need the money to finish the project, which means I got to put the project on hold. And that's where that science fiction web series is right now. So now that you know a little bit about me, let's hit the questions. So uh, question number one is, what are your creative superpowers? And 
even though I just told you that I am an author, self-published on Amazon with five books so far, um, and a actor and a sometimes producer, I really don't consider those my superpowers. What I consider my superpowers is supporting other creators in building their communities, allowing them then to spread their message and to build their communities, their support systems, and hopefully develop their thousand true fans so they can then make some money doing what they love, right? That is my superpower, marketing. And I know marketing may be considered a four-letter word in some people, but for me, it's my lifeblood. It's what makes me breathe. Because unless you can get your message out there, it doesn't matter how good your content is, right? I love Field of Dreams, but if you build it, they will not come unless they know the stadium is there. So that is my superpower, helping creative solopreneurs, what my term for creators, creative solopreneurs, build their communities and their platforms so they could eventually monetize their creations. Uh, question number two, what is your current work in progress? Well, at the moment, there are two things I'm currently working on and one on a back burner. Uh, the two things I'm working on are novels right now. The main novel that I'm working on is a mystery novel around a detective by the name of Rose Marie Hanlon, goes by the nickname of Calves McGillicuddy. And I really envision this to be a series, right? The first book in a series of books that I could just keep telling her story and her adventures over and over and over with new stories and new murders and new mysteries to talk about. And I, I love this character, but I'm also very surprised by it because my original concept for uh, Rosemary Hanlon was a female Sam Spade, right? I love film noir. I love Dashiell Hammett and Raymond Chandler and especially Humphrey Bogart. And I thought it would be fun to take that hard-boiled, hard-living, hard-loving, hard-drinking personality of that gumshoe P.I., bring it into the modern day and have a woman play that role. But a strange thing happened as I started to flesh out the character and write the book, and that is the character had her own ideas on what her personality and her beliefs were going to be. And my concept of the character from that omnisexual, hard-living, hard-loving, hard-drinking, callous, caustic individual turned into, it turned into something totally different. Right? And I'm curious if that happens to you folks. Have you ever written a character or had an idea for a character in your head and you fleshed them out and you put the basic skeleton together on paper? But then when you started writing the character, the character sort of turned to you and went, no, 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 that's not my personality. This is who I am. And turned into something totally different. Right? Because that seems to happen to me all the time. And thankfully, I always listen to my characters because it's always so much better than I, I had envisioned. It really is. Uh, the second novel that I'm working on, and I don't know if it's a novel or a novella or a short story, I don't know where it's going to end up yet, is a piece of erotica. And it was really started as a dare from the last girl I dated dared me to write this. And I just wrote it for kicks and giggles to throw up on Amazon for 99 cents and to see where it was going to go. And it turned out to, again, just like the other one, I can't write anything unless I have fully fleshed characters, it seems. Because what this story is turning into is really the coming of age story of a young woman who is really struggling with her family situation and with her own sexuality as she thought she was uh, heterosexual and discovers that she is bisexual and also discovers that 
she's okay living a non-monogamous lifestyle with a group of people who are in a committed relationship with each other together. And I think the story, more than the sex of this, is really what's interesting and is really what's driving it. So that's the next novel. The third one, which is on the back burner, is a, um, a graphic novel of uh, a series of scripts that I had written that I had hoped to bring to the web as a anthology show that never went anywhere. But the director of the show actually contacted me after reading the scripts and said, hey, listen, can we turn this into a graphic novel? So I got about eight or 10 scripts that I wrote for that project. I turned them all over to him and he is now doing all the artwork so we can turn that into a graphic novel. It's going to be called uh, The Meat Locker and it's sort of like an anthology series of Twilight Zone meets Tales from the Crypt is basically the way I explain it. Um, what inspired me to start this channel? Well, to be perfectly honest, I don't have a channel, right? This is the first video that I am purposefully recording to put myself out there. And I got to tell you, it's a little nerve wracking, right? I'm sweating a little bit. I don't know if you could see it on camera, but I'm definitely sweating here. Um, and along that lines, I hope to make this a regular thing. Because speaking with Robert, and I got to admit, Robert is my very own Jiminy Cricket, right? He sort of sits there and he's my conscience. And every time I decide to go a little bit too far from my core and who I really am, Robert whispers something in my ear or we have a conversation just at the right time and it brings me back in, right? Not unlike Al Pacino in Godfather 3, right? And in this time, this conversation was about helping and building this community of creators and really supporting each other. So what I would like to do is share my journey with you guys, let you know what my challenges and my successes are, let you learn from my wisdom. And in my case, when I say wisdom, that just simply means I made the mistake so you don't have to. So I'm going to start, I promise you, I'm committing myself in public now, so I have to do this. I promise you that I am going to release a video every week where I will share my story and I will also share with you the tips and the strategies and the secrets on how you can grow your community and create those thousand true fans that are so necessary to monetize your platform and to make money with your creations, right? And I believe that's what we all should do. I understand there is a need to get these things out of us and to birth them, but I am a capitalist. And if it is coming from you, it is worth being seen by the world. And if it's worth being seen by the world, then it's worth having a couple of shekels in your checking account. Um, so what do you want to see more of on this platform? Well, okay, this is a real difficult question for me because before speaking with Robert, I didn't know AuthorTube and BookTube and all these other tubes existed. The main reason I used YouTube was to basically look stuff up when I'm researching how to do things and also to play music, right? That's, that's all. Instead of hitting iTunes or the radio, I just go on a YouTube and I go down the rabbit hole going from one song to another song to another song or also really old Bugs Bunny cartoons. I love Bugs Bunny cartoons. So I'm going to maybe answer this question a little generically on what I would like to see in general on YouTube or on this Creators Matter platform. And really what I would love to see is the journey that you are all on. Because I feel it's important that all of us understand we're in the same boat. Content creation, whether it's a novel whether it's painting, whether it's drawing, whether you're making music, whether you're even building a website, right? It's all content creation. And content creation is a very lonely business, right? Because we're all in our heads all the time. And most of the time we're sitting in front of our computers or we're sitting in the studio 
and there's nobody with us. And so what I want to know is that there's other people like me with the same challenges and the same dreams that are out there. So I would love to hear your stories. I would love to follow your journeys. And I really would suggest, I was going to use the word challenge, but I don't think we're at that point in our relationship yet. I would suggest that you guys, instead of, or in addition to putting out videos about strategies on how to write, which is great. Also, document your journey. Let us know what's going on. And maybe you guys are doing this and I haven't seen it because again, as I say, I'm not familiar enough with the AuthorTube platform or the BookTube platform or any of the tubes that are out there. So maybe this is going on and it's already out there and I just have to find it. But I would really love to see people documenting their journeys. I'd love to see people using this platform to reach out and form collaborations, working together on projects, right? That's what I really, really, really want to see. And finally, question five, do you aspire to sell services? And I guess if you watch this video, this is pretty much an easy answer. That's a big hells to the yes, <laughs> okay? Um, this is actually what I do for a living. I am a marketer an online marketer, or as I call myself, a branding strategist, who helps creators, creative solopreneurs, get their business going online and build their communities, right? I already do this, so the answer to this is yes, I do sell services. Now, having said that, don't worry about this whole video being one lead-in to a pitch fest, right? The videos that I am going to put out there are not going to hit you up so you can be part of my product, so you can buy my service, or you can get this or that or the other thing. I don't believe in that. I don't work that way, right? I am going to give you my best information. I'm going to share my best stories with you on video, and I'm going to create my platform off of the Creators Matter hashtag that I hope to bring value to all of you. So again, I want to thank Robert for putting this hashtag up there. I think this is a great idea to build community and to build that support system that everybody needs. I look forward to seeing where this is going. And um, I really hope that you stick around and you hang out for a while. The name of the channel, oh, right now it's Gary Carp. I don't have a, a fancy name like uh, Story Detective like Robert does. I love that name, by the way, because it describes exactly what he's doing. It's great. Uh, I hope to come up with something just as clever for my own channel. But until then, it's just Gary Carp. I hope to put out videos every week to share my journey with you guys and to support you on yours by sharing some secrets of building your community. So, uh, anyway, I thank you for listening, and uh, I'll see you around.